To learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So, had an interesting night last night. I caught two intruders under a tiny house last night. But before I get into that, I want to actually talk about the projects that we got going on. I've been promising you for some time now that I'm going to start working on the porch roof and the well house. So today I went and got some materials and when I got there, uh, I had some bad news. They didn't have the metal roofing material, the silver stuff like the chicken coop here. It's interesting. So the guy uh, that I talked to, the employee at Home Depot, he speculates that since lumber prices are so high, anywhere from 60 to 100 bucks for a piece of plywood, that people are starting to use this metal material that we've become so fond of here on our property to lower the cost of whatever projects they got going on. So I'm not gonna be able to work on the well house until I can get some more metal. They had it due for delivery on the 19th and I don't know, this is probably the 26th. So it's really late. Now, of course, he also said it could be truckers not being able to deliver and it's just a crazy time. So. The well house is going to have to wait, but I got some ideas because one of the commenters gave me an idea. So what we have here though is you can see this is the clear plastic stuff. And this is what Carolyn wants to use on the roof of the porch. They came in 12 foot sheets and 8 foot sheets. We went ahead and got the 8 foot sheets because it's easier to transport. So I got 9 of these instead of the 6 12 foot. And it actually came up to a lower cost. The only thing I got to do now is make sure that I can get them to overlap. I've talked to you about how I'm going to pour the, the four corner post. So I have the materials for that. I've showed you that before. When I was building the tiny house and we got the siding, the metal roofing material, I had to buy crates. Now I could return the crates. Long story, but I, and I don't want to get into the crate story again. The crates were two by fours and two by sixes. And these two by fours are like 24 foot long. They're huge. The building is 16 feet and you can see they stick out quite a bit. So that's 24 feet. And then the two by sixes uh, are 16 feet long. So I got plenty of material to build the frame of the porch roof. So I'm gonna use four corner posts. What I'll do is I'll put two two by fours together and that'll make a four by four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour concrete but I don't want to pour concrete into the ground. I don't want to dig a hole into the ground because I like the idea that this thing is movable. We'll never move it. But if we ever did want to move it, we could literally just pick the porch up, turn it upside down, lay it here or something. The porch is not going to be permanently attached to the ground. Now, when I pour the concrete, I will screw the board up against here. That way it will make it more solid, but the concrete is just going to be a footing. And then it'll come up to the edge of the roof there. So what I'm gonna do is I'll pour concrete into buckets. The buckets were only $4 a piece. If I got in Home Depot buckets, they're orange. I could have gotten $3 a piece. These are food grade, that's actually kind of neat. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour the concrete into the bucket. So how this is gonna work is I'll, st I'll put my pole in there and I'll try to level up as best I can. I'll pour the concrete mix into it. Then I can definitely level it up because then you got the concrete kind of holding in place. Now this stuff's really neat. All the other concrete I've showed you in the past, you have to mix. So if you want to make a slab, you have to mix that concrete. But if you're going to pour a post, you buy this uh, fast setting concrete mix. It's quickcrete. So you just pour the concrete into the bucket. You pour the, a gallon of water into the bucket and it mixes automatically. You don't have to do, do any mixing. So that's gonna be really nice. So one 50 pound bag will fill one bucket. So I'm gonna start that tomorrow. I wanted to start it today, but we got back so late that I didn't have time. I still gotta get the two by fours out. I gotta get all the stuff out and loaded. So by the time I get everything done, it's gonna be one, two o'clock in the afternoon and I gotta get to work, I'm already late. As you know, I work at home online and I gotta I got work every day, seven days a week. Somebody suggested if we wanted to save money on the well house, that we could use the tent since we're going to build a porch we could use the tent here that we've been using for the porch over the well house well since there's no metal and i can't really build anything 
I might do that. I might just go ahead and stick that tent over this, take the tarp off. That might make it a little better looking. That being said, I don't have to buy the lumber for the well house either. Just need to buy the metal. And I got all kinds of scrap wood down here. And depending what's left over underneath the porch, I might I'll probably have plenty left over there. So as soon as I'm done building the porch, I'm going to start building the walls, framing the walls for the well house. And that way, when I get the metal, I can just put the metal on. I don't know if I showed you this, but I recently got myself a step ladder. Uh, when I was building a tiny house, I only had an extension ladder. There's the kitty sitting behind the axe. I don't know. Can you see it sitting behind the axe? So I got myself a folding ladder here instead of that extension ladder that I had used to build a tiny house. This will make building that roof a lot easier. With that extension ladder, it was tough trying to figure out a place to support it when I was building. Now, I am going to run into a problem right here. This is my bridge to my porch. I love my bridge. This bridge makes walking out of the house so much easier. The, the problem is, is when I measured out the bridge, I did not take into consideration my support for the handrail. I took into consideration the handrail, but not the support. So you'll notice what I did was, I have my post for my handrail. I got a two by six on this side, two by six on that side. That keeps the handrail from moving back and forth this way. But then I put a, a, a board on this side and that keeps the handrail from moving you know, side to side. Well, I'm going to have to take that off. It's unfortunate because there's not enough room now to put my 2x4 here when I raise up my post from the concrete bucket. I'll have to take that off. I'm hoping that, that I can figure out some way to continue to support this once the 2x4 is there. I might be able to rig something up. But that's the only down thing I got right now. And as soon as I did it, I realized that's what I did. But it was too late. All the measurements had already been made. The path has already been built. So it's just a little minor thing I'm going to have to deal with. This shouldn't take too long. I should be able to get this done relatively quick. And then Carolyn can start to bring her stuff out so she can make this her kitchen. She wants to make this her kitchen. Tomato plants are doing amazing. They're already starting to bloom. She's got to get these things planted soon. So as you know, I've been feeding a feral cat for, well, almost a year now. And I feed her canned food and dry food. Uh, about, I feed her two, ca two cans of food each day. And you can buy this stuff pretty inexpensively here. I think you buy five of them for two bucks or something. It's really inexpensive. So this whole tray here, I think, cost me 10 bucks. So I give her two cans a day. Since the big freeze this last winter, She's been around quite a bit. And I think she's, well, I know she's been making her home up underneath the house. So last night, I heard a noise and I couldn't figure out what it was. I thought Carolyn got out of bed and it felt similar to her getting out of the bed. I mean, you know, our house is on a trailer frame, so there is some movement when you can feel some vibrations. It's not like rocking in the wind, but you can feel the vibrations walking across the floor. So, I opened my eyes and she's still laying in bed so she didn't go to the bathroom. So I got up and I looked out all the windows to see if I could see anything. I didn't see anything. Everything looked fine. I checked out here on the porch. I didn't do a thorough analysis of what was going on. It, it could have been anything. And so my brain kept telling me one of two things. It's either the cat jumped up on the rail underneath the house or Carolyn must have came back to bed. Now, of course, I'm droggy, and I don't really know what I'm, I'm doing. I lay back down, and of course, it takes me a few minutes to go back to sleep, and I get back to sleep, and a little while later, I feel it again. I thought, what the heck is this? Well, this time, it's getting pretty bad. I, I get up, and of course, I have uh, self-protection, so I grab my self-protection, and I, I start to head out the door and I felt it again. I mean, the house is just vibrating. They're bouncing and you can hear it and they're bouncing and I, I don't know what's going on. And then I hear the cat just upset. Well, then I got to think, well, maybe the cat has found himself a mate. I know I call the cat a female, but it is actually a male. And maybe they're up under the house. I know cats can get pretty wild. She stopped, and, but the, the bouncing was still going on, and I'm hearing things get knocked around underneath the house. So I decided that I need to come out. 
and I open the door and a dog, a white and black dog barks. He's, he's right over on the other side of the porch. It runs off into the woods. But there's still noise going on underneath the house. And I'm yelling, get the heck out of here. Get the heck out of here. What are you doing? It was a black dog this time. And it comes running out and off into the woods. Oh, what a frightening night. So this morning I get up and the cat's waiting for me on the porch again like she does every morning. He does every morning. And I, I get the can of food. I jump down and I get the can of food. And so I get up underneath the house to see what they tore up because I knew they had to tear something up and sure enough they knocked this drain pipe from the shower off so I had to fix that this morning I hope I can inspire you to investigate when something goes wrong in your dream thanks for watching